Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing very, very well on this lovely Saturday. I have had a very lovely morning. I've walked my dogs, drank my coffee, started a book. It has been very relaxing and I am enjoying it and I hope you are too. Um, first, I wanna say thank you to everyone who has so far entered my giveaway for See What I Have Done by Sarah Schmidt and The Immortalists by Chloe Benjamin on my 2018 Reading Aspirations video. You still have a little over a week to enter if you like. Just watch the video, see what the requirements are, and put a comment. So far I have 160 comments and about 155 people who have asked to be entered into the um, giveaway. So that is super exciting and I have been inspired by the amount of reading we all intend to do in 2018 which I think is fantastic. Um, I am coming today to do a book haul. I, for some reason, have a ton of books I have not told you guys about. Some things sent by publishers, some stuff I bought on vacation, um, some stuff I just bought. So I'm going to be splitting it into two um, so far because it's a lot of books. So without further ado, let's get started. Get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads. This is quite a list, you guys. I am super excited. First, I'm going to send uh, talk to you about some books that were sent to me. And the first two I'm going to tell you about are actually out. One is out and one comes out in a couple weeks. So I definitely want it on your guys' radar. The first book I'm going to tell you about is The Job of the Wasp by Colin Winnetti. Um, I hope that's how you say your last name, Colin. I apologize. Now, this book came out this week, and this was sent to me by Soft Skull Press. And one, can we just talk about how creepy this cover is? And I'm going to try to read very few blurbs, but this blurb really does a much. So I don't read a lot of horror fiction, but for those of you guys that like something a little creepy, I think this book is going to be for you. It says, a late arrival at an isolated school for orphan orphaned boys quickly comes to re realize there is something wrong with his new home. He hears chilling whispers in the night. His troubled classmates are violent and hostile, and the headmaster sends cryptic messages begging his new charge to confess. As the new boy learns to survive on the edges of this impolite society, he starts to unravel a mystery at the school's dark heart. And that's when the corpses start turning up. You guys. And there's like a little blurb at the beginning that says, I spent re recess on the edge of a yard watching the other boys chase one another and slap each other in the testicles. Civilized boys are barbaric in their play. And to me, every single one of them seemed murderous. That sounds so good. I'm actually going to go see him uh, read from his book on March 4th in San Francisco. So check out my um, Twitter or Instagram if you're interested in going to see that, and I would love to see you there. That is The Job of the Wasp by Colin Winnetti. Thank you, Soft Skull Press. I have so many books here, guys. I don't know how I'm going to juggle all of this. The next book that was sent to me very, very kindly by the author is Red Clocks by Lenny Zumas. And Lenny, I hope I'm saying your last name right, but one, she made the nicest inscription on the inside, and I have been so excited about Red Clocks ever since I heard about it, originally when Simon got his proof over at Savage Reads. This is the story, um, this is an alternate universe. So, abortion has become once again illegal in America. In vitro fertilization is banned, and the personhood amendment grants rights of life, liberty, and property to every embryo. In a small Oregon fishing town, five very different women navigate these new barriers alongside age-old questions surrounding motherhood, identity, and freedom. Roe is a single high school teacher, is trying to have a baby on her own while writing the biography of Ivor, a little-known 19th century female polar explorer. Susan is a frustrated mother of two trapped in a crumbling marriage. Maddie is the adopted daughter of doting parents and one of Roe's best students, who finds herself pregnant with nowhere to turn. And Jin. Jin is the gifted forest dweller herbalist, or mender, who brings all of their fates together when she is arrested and put on trial in a frenzied modern-day witch hunt. I am so excited to read this book. You guys have no idea. Uh, Lenny Zumas is fantastic on Twitter. You guys should really follow her. Her schedule is out. She's going to be in San Francisco on, I want to say January 16th or 19th. Look it up. I will be there. It's at um, The Booksmith. 
please come see her with me. I think you guys will love her and love this book. Okay. Now some books that have already been out, and then at the end I'll have two books to tell you about that are coming out later this year that I really want you guys to have on your radar. The first book I'm going to tell you about that's been out for a while is Sorry to Disrupt the Peace by Patty Yumi um, Cottrell. And Patty, I'm sorry if I'm saying your last name wrong. What I will say about this book is that the reason I purchased this is because Joss over Squibble Rees said this was her number one read of 2017. This is the story of Helen. Helen is single, she's educated, she has a job, and at the um, one day while she's at Ikea, she gets a call that her adoptive brother has killed himself or is dead. Um, and it is in the blurb, it kind of um, insinuates that he killed himself, so that's not a spoiler. And she sort of starts the hunt into why. She feels there are six possible reasons that her brother could have killed himself or would have killed himself. And she investigates her family history. She investigates the town. She investigates her brother's life. Um, I've heard that it is heart-wrenching and also has a sense of humor um, to it. And I've heard it's beautifully written, and I am so excited. And gosh, my copy is super beat up. But that is Sorry to Disrupt the Peace by Patty Yumi Kotrell. Okay, so the next couple books, I don't think you guys are going to have heard of most of these. I was on some random lists um, of people recommending books that you may not have heard of. And um, I really started, I hadn't heard of any of these. So when I was at um, Powell's in Portland, I started to pick them up. The first of those was Grief Cottage by Gail Godwin. Now, this is the novel of a young boy. He's 11 years old. What's his name? Marcus. He's 11 years old and his mother has passed away. So he is sent to live on a small island off of South Carolina with his very eccentric artistic aunt. And on that island, there's something called the Grief Cottage. It's a cottage where 50 years ago, a mother and son disappeared and no one ever found their bodies and no one ever knows what happens to them. The young boy, as his aunt is dealing with her own things and her own artistic sort of um, spiritual quest, let's call it that, he starts to get the gumption to get closer and closer to the grief cottage. And as he gets closer and closer, he believes that the ghost of the young boy who went missing 50 years ago comes to speak to him. It's a ghost story, but it's also a coming of age story. And it has um, a lot about learning about yourself while you, with the help of other people. And I just thought it sounded fantastic. And that is Grief Cottage by Gail Goodwin. The next book that I'm gonna tell you about was actually on a list similar to that. Um, and Jasmine Ward, who wrote um, Sing Unburied Sing and uh, Salvage the Bones recommended this novel saying, hey, this is a book that I really like that I don't think enough people have read. And that is The Signal Flame by Andrew Krivak. Now, Andrew was shortlisted for the National Book Award for a novel called The Sojourn. I haven't heard of either of those books. Um, but when I read the inside of this, I was like, oh my goodness, I really have to read this book. So this is about a family in Pennsylvania, and it's really about three different men in three different generations and how three different wars affect this family. So originally it is the father figure. I think his name is Yosef. He comes to America after World War I, um, gets married, has a family. His daughter, Hannah, marries a, an American um who goes into World War II, but um, flees World War II and goes to prison. And when he is out of prison, he's then killed in a hunting accident. And then it's the story of her son who goes to Vietnam. And it's a story about family, and it's the story about how this family is touched by three different types of war and how it forms sort of the history and the, the um, I don't know, what's the right word? what goes through the, the, the soul of this family and how it's affected by all of this, this war. Um, yeah, her youngest, uh, yeah, and there's, and then it's her youngest son. So her one son is killed, I think, in Vietnam or reported missing in action, and then she has a remaining child. So the daughter of, that's, that's really confusing, guys. So, so the daughter has a son who's killed in Vietnam or missing in Vietnam, and then another son. And um, it's about his story, dealing with all of the stuff, too. So there's a lot in this slim little book. It's hard to explain, but I think it's going to be powerful. I think the cover is really beautiful. 
Um, hopefully, um, I did a better job of explaining that than I think I did, but Ray, uh, Richard Russo recommends it, Marlon James recommends it, so, and Jasmine Ward. And that's The Signal Flame by Andrew Kryback. Okay, I gotta get going, because I gotta steal some books. This book, I am so excited about. One, um, it's called Empire of Glass by Caitlin Sol Solomine, and this cover is fantastic. This is the story of um, Lo Kay. In 1990, she's an American-born Chinese teenager. She's in China in the very start of the book in a park with her mother with a rope in her hands trying to decide whether or not to help her mother commit suicide. Then, according to the back, it later jumps and as an adult, she receives a novel called Empire of Glass that was written by her mother and she is charged to translate it the book we have in our hands. Um, and it's the, a story that um, discusses her mother, how her mother married her father, and everything that goes into her family. But as she's in, um, translating the novel and learning about her family history, she continues to learn about herself and all of the sort of ways that she became who she was. I love the last line, it says, but as translator, how can Lo K separate fact from fiction and what will her role be in the book's final chapter? Now, at the beginning of the book, we know that she's sitting there with this rope trying to decide whether or not she's gonna help her mom commit suicide. So I think that sounds so good. And that is Empire of Glass by Caitlin Solmine. I will be honest that this next purchase was basically a cover buy, but once I read the inside of it, I had to get The Architecture of Loss by Z.P. Dahlia. One, this book is set in, South, set in South Africa, which I don't know a lot about South Africa. I mean, I've read some Kutsi and um, other novels from there, but this one just sounded so good. So this is the story of Afros. She is a young girl who lives, works in an architecture firm in Cape Town, and she is successful, and she gets notice that her... Um, mother is dying her birth mother is dying but she hasn't seen her birth mother since she was six she's very close to her um stepmother who has raised her and they agree that she has to go see her mother she won't forgive herself if she doesn't so she goes to confront her mother to this very small town i'm trying to figure out if it um brighton in rural town zooland so she goes to sort of her childhood home to confront her mother her mother is dealing with all sorts of things, too. I like, I'm like. i just going to read you this middle part. It says, Here a froze confronts Sylvie, a mother who is dying but clinging desperately to her own secrets and regrets. Watched over by Sylvie's fiercely protective caregiver, Hala, Halamai, a refugee from Mawali, Malali, I'm sorry, guys, I'm having quite a day, and quartered by the handsome older man, Safi, who cannot decide what or who he wants, mother or and daughter, cannot make a step without reigniting old pain, until the skeletons in the closet of Sylvie's past life at the height of apartheid South Africa are revealed one fateful night, and the two begin to find a tenuous hope to forgiveness. Oh my gosh, that sounds so good. The Architecture, I'm sorry, The Architecture of Loss by Z.P. Dala. Oh my gosh, it sounds so good. Okay, so the last book that is out already is actually by an Oregon author, and that is Tornado Weather by Deborah E. Kennedy. This is the story of a bus driver. Let me get you his name, Ficus. Um, Ficus drives a bus. He has very strict rules about making sure that all the children are picked up, but one day um, the weather is getting really bad, a tornado is coming, and he drops off a little girl who is in a wheelchair who says, I can get home, you can leave, because her father, for the first time, is not there. And he leaves, and the little girl goes missing. And this is the story of that missing little girl. And this is set in Indiana, I want to say. Yes, I believe it's set in Indiana. But, you guys, sometimes people write blurbs, and they just do everything for you. So here's just the last paragraph. Um... To an outsider, Kohlersville, Indiana may seem like nothing more than a flyover country, a quiet and unassuming corner of the world where nothing of importance could possibly take place. But it is, in fact, a microcosm of changing America. It is about the people in the town, who blames who, how they deal with differences and change in time, and I think it sounds amazing, and that is Tornado Weather by Deborah K. Kennedy. 
Okay, two books, the last two books that are not coming out until later in the year, but I want to definitely put them on your radar. The first book is coming out in March, and it's coming out in the UK in March, and I think soon thereafter in the US as too. And this is the follow-up to Keeper of Lost Things by Ruth Hogan, and this is The, Pecul blah, blah, blah. the Particular Wisdom of Sally Red Shoes. Now, I took this with me to read over Christmas and Ruth broke my heart in like the first 20 pages. And I was like, I can't be crying at Christmas. So um, let me just kind of tell you, this is the story of Masha. Masha has had a tragedy in her life and she has not been able for 12 years to get past it. Um, and she really goes to the, to the graveyard and sort of has created a relationship with the people in the graveyard because she can't deal with what's happened in her life. But then on a chance encounter, she meets two women. One is Kitty Muriel, and I'm just going to read the description of her. A convent, a convent girl turned magician's wife turned 70-something roller disco fanatic. Love that description. And Sally Redshoes, a bag lady of prodigious voice, and they open a world of new possibilities until one day when the past comes rushing in. Now I'm telling you right now, I you know how I felt about Keeper of Lost Things. 25 pages in, I was crying on my mom's couch in Oregon, breaking my heart, breaking my heart, Ruth. So I'm gonna wait a little bit to read this till it's closer to coming out. Um, and that's The uh, Particular Wisdom of Sally Red Shoes by Ruth Hogan. In Lao, last but not least, is a book that I am so excited that Little Brown sent me an arc of. You guys have no idea. And that's What We Were Promised by Lucy Tan. Now, this book was actually um, on Twitter by Chloe Benjamin of The Immortalist, was telling people to read this when it came out. And Lucy kindly enough offered to have her publisher send me a copy. And I am so excited. This comes out in July, I want to say, July 10th. So put it on your Goodreads list. They may do a giveaway. And this is the story of the Zen family who um, were in America chasing the American dream and they move back to China and they move into a very fancy apartment complex and it's about the family. And one morning in their house, something goes missing. An ivory bracelet, bracelet goes missing and this incident contributes to sort of a wave of things happening in the family. The father isn't happy with the job he's chosen. The mother realizes and discusses her marriage to the father and how she may still be in love with it, actually with his brother. Um, yeah, there is so much going on. I loved this line here. The mother, she spends her days haunted by the circumstances surrounding her arranged marriage to Wee and her lingering feelings for her brother, his brother, Quang. Lena and Wee take pains to hide their anxieties, but their housekeeper, Sunny, a hardworking girl with secrets of her own, bears witness to their struggles. When Quang reappears in Shanghai after decades on the run with a local gang, the family must come to terms with the past. Guys, doesn't what we were promised sound so good? And this arc is just gorgeous. So, Lucy Tan, I cannot wait to read your book. I will likely, again, wait until closer to publishing time. Um, because I don't want to uh, talk too much about it before it's come out too far. But that is a list of books, guys. This, movie, this video is super long, but I hope all of these make it onto your TBR. Have you read any? Let me know. Please talk about it below. As always, if you are a return subscriber, thank you so much. I appreciate it. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I hope you subscribe as well and like what you saw. Until next time, happy reading, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.